you, not a seeker. The only thing I want you to worry about is this, the golden snitch. I like this ball. Nah, you like it now. Just wait. It's wicked fast and damn near impossible to see. What do I do with it? You catch it before the other can seek it. You catch this, the game is over. You catch this, Potter, and we win. And we win. John here, guys, and today we are talking about the UR UAV UR65 Micro FPV Racer Drone. Now, that is what they call it, but let's see if that holds up. Now, I famously made the video a while back about the Leader 120, which I titled Whoops Are for Wimps, and I stand by this. Now, even though this is a whoop class, uh, and for those who don't know, a tiny whoop is a small bit, roughly this size in shape, a uh, copter that became very popular a while back, um, just because of its size, because it could go anywhere, use small batteries, but they use those tiny brushed motors. Much like these little toy grade things, this basically was one of these with a camera on it. And so it just, while it was fun, it didn't have any power and it just couldn't do any of the maneuvers that you are used to doing. But now, at very close to the same size, you can have brushless motors. Whoa, that's what I've been waiting for, guys. I'm tired of those brush motors that wear out quickly, don't have any power, can't perform any of the maneuvers that you're used to performing on your full-size quads. Now, these are 0603 17,000 kV motors. Now let's do um, some size comparisons very quickly with a few other things. So you can see them um, right there next to my Fat Shark HDO goggles. Let's take this out of the way for a second. Um, let's compare them to my full size five inch quad. This is my CF1 Stretch X that I carry my GoPro on. Look at it. It's it's almost like the same size as the GoPro. Look at that. Look at how tiny this is. Um, let's compare it next to... Let's zoom in there a little bit. Let's compare it next to uh, the 3-inch Massive Droner. And next to that, it really does make the Massive Droner look massive. Look how small this thing is compared to that. Uh, let's see if I can get the focus just a little bit better. There. Um, so you can see this thing is tiny. Let's compare it to a um, five inch motor. <laughs> Look how tiny those little motors are uh, next to it. And finally, uh, I think this is a cool comparison. Let's compare it to um, Generation 1 Bumblebee. <laughs> So, and, okay, we have, uh, I believe this is hoist. Uh, we have those two there. So, that's about the size of these things, guys. They're, they're just barely taller than, larger than Bumblebee, and perhaps uh, a slightly smaller than Hound. Here we have Hound. Uh, so, that's the size of these things, guys. Very, very small. And... But the, the size wasn't so much my main concern. As uh, in the, I mentioned in the Leader 120 Whoops are for Wimps videos, you can run a 2.5 inch on 2S inside your house comfortably. So does this have a place? Can this do things that the Leader 120 cannot? Uh, and that's what I wanted to find out. So I have flown this a few packs, and I'm going to tell you now that it can do things the Leader 120 cannot. Um, there is a, there's two maneuvers that I would consistently always try to do with the tiny whoops and the larger ones. Now, before I keep going, it does come with this cool charger that you can charge three packs. I'm actually using a China Hobby Line 
a forest battery to charge these right now because I've been flying the three packs that it comes with just about constantly. And so I do need to buy some more batteries so I can keep myself in the air. These are almost charged. And when they're charged, I'm gonna be flying some more. But the two maneuvers that I have been trying to nail with really any micro size quad has been the, um, I've been using four chairs as kind of a very long series of gates. And so that maneuver, uh, even with the Leader 120, was very hard. I did manage to get it, but I would only get it maybe three out of ten times. Um, and with the UR, UAV, UR65, I nailed it on the first try. What? Um, so you're going to see that coming up. The other maneuver I've been trying to do is uh, a really righteous sort of a power loopy type maneuver where I want to start from my upstairs. I want to go up and then kind of go down almost like a, a split S um, from my upstairs down to my downstairs like this and have it first. I'm, so I'm going to have to hit the dive gap between my upstairs stair rail and my uh, kind of chandelier that hangs there. I'm gonna have to get hit the gap between those two and then power up hard enough to where I can level out and come into my living room. So I have tried that about four or five times unsuccessfully, but I think the power may be there. It's, it's tricky though, because even though this does have enough power to do some indoor acro flips and rolls, it's it's not a hundred percent as strong as I'd like it to be. If this thing just had you know maybe twenty percent more power, it would be absolutely perfect. Um, but let's see if we can make it work. I, I want to try and see if I can nail that maneuver. This thing is very fun. Um, it does have like one of these new F three boards. The motors just plug in, so there's no soldering involved. This is really really bind and fly. There's a little button on there that you can bind to your Tyrannus. And then you're up and going. It can be flown with an extreme amount of precision. Um, as much as I do like the Leader 120, you really had to have a lot of practice flying indoors like, like I do to really fly that around. This one um, can go at pretty substantially fast speeds for indoors. And... I mean, you don't have to worry about banging any of your stuff up. I've been trying this super hard power loop split S type maneuver. And this thing has just held up to crashes. Now, those are on carpet. But still, they're, I mean, they're coming from, you know, six, eight feet high. Um, so that's been very impressive. This is just kind of your standard Tiny Whoop style frame. But it's for brushless motors. They have three little screws at the bottom. So let's get on to the footage. Enough talking about it. I'm going to show you all those maneuvers and let's see um, what that looks like.
I think I finally found the secret to executing that split S maneuver. What I finally figured out was that the battery just kept coming out as I executed the maneuver and then that would drag me down. So I just put a tiny little bit of scotch tape as a temporary fix uh, right there. And then no problems. I have, I have, I'm gonna now switch to a video where I did that move successfully you know, three or four times in a row. Now on one of those, I actually crashed on the top of my stair rail and this kind of jarred the camera a little wonky. So I'm gonna have to open up the canopy and fix that. But check out the rest of these um, items, or not the, the rest of these clips. Uh, and so I finally figured out the secret. So this is magical. This is what I've been waiting for, the power enough um, at this size to be able to execute power loops, split S's, um, tiny gate, you know, gaps inside my house. It is going to be raining all week um, where I live. And so this is going to be critical to, for me to keep practicing and playing around. So really happy I got this. What's coming next though? It's going to be the Snapper 7. So that is on the way. Which one of these two is going to be better? Lots of videos about these two. So it's going to really mean something coming from myself, who is uh, kind of a connoisseur of these indoor micros. And let's see what that can do in my hands. We have now seen that this can do some exceptional indoor maneuvers that I never would thought possible. I could not do that with the Leader 120 without risking smashing into something. Um, I had to fly a little bit more subdued. With this, it has survived some significant hits just because it's so light. So get one right now. On to the last of the footage. Try to be